Hi everyone, I'm Mary Beth McAndrews from Dread Central, and I am here today with Alice Krieg, uh, an incredible actor. You've seen her in a ton of genre movies, but she is the star in the new film, She Will. Hi Alice, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very well and very happy to be here. So She Will is an incredible film. I just watched it today. And what drew you to being a part of this, of this film in particular? I, I was sent the script and I thought it was, um, there was, there was a, a bunch of things that, that really kind of connected with me. I thought Veronica's journey from an incredibly angry, bitter, defended, hurt human being to someone who could trust again um, and, and be vulnerable and yeah. be open to affection was, I thought it was wonderful. Um, and I thought it was beautifully written. And especially I loved that the possibility of, of redemption is offered to her by a young woman who's been equally hurt in a different way as a child. And instead of holding the world at arm's length and shutting it out, Desi, who's, it's a beautiful, uh, performance by Kota Eberhard, um, Desi reaches out to help other people. And um, she really does offer Veronica redemption. Um, just the possibility of, of opening her heart again. So that was one thing. The other thing was that I absolutely adored the director. I, I, oh. I met her and we totally hit it off with each other. She, her name is Charlotte Colbert. She's a, a fine artist in her, you know, established. Yeah. Um, this is her first movie, but she has got, she, I mean, every human being is unique, but Charlotte is quite unlike anyone else. <laughs> she, I, I absolutely adore her. And we had a, we had a great time making the movie um so that was that was great it was just a meeting of minds hearts and minds when we met um and then there was another thing that i that i loved and i've not seen it kind of anywhere else i mean i don't watch a whole lot of stuff so i'm pretty mm -hmm. ignorant so it it might be everywhere and i just haven't seen it but she explores in, in a glancing kind of way. It's not front and center, but the fact that we are here as humans um, between heaven and earth. I mean, you get this overwhelming sense of the cosmos and you get oh. the earth and the life in the earth. And it's almost as if the trees are drawing down heaven to earth it, she she explores nature i think in a completely unique way and looks at it as really potent and recognizes that that we have a very special relationship to nature if only we would take the time to acknowledge it and experience it oh wow yes oh my gosh wow that is that is incredible. That is incredible. And like her eye for the, in this movie is also gorgeous. Like it's a little bit different than you'd think. Like a genre movie. It's a little like you said, art. A little bit more high fine art. It's yeah. It. It's it's. I wouldn't call it. Well, it definitely is not horror, as yeah. in Chainsaw Massacre. Oh it's yeah. Kind of, <laughs> that's another story. Kind of um, <laughs> like like a psychological thriller or drama. And it, it's, I also loved how it drew in the supernatural of mm -hmm. the women who had been burned um, and their grief and trauma and the fact that they were in some way still trapped in this dimension. Um, and all of it kind of comes together. I mean, interestingly, in, in many of the reviews, they describe uh, Veronica as wanting revenge. Mm -hmm. um, and I never thought she wanted revenge. I thought she wanted the truth. 
Oh. He says to her, what do you want? Okay. And she says, I want the truth. I want you to tell the truth. Yeah. If he can tell the truth, then he won't do it again. But isn't that, could, it's interesting because it, couldn't that be seen as a kind of type of revenge in a, in a different way? Because I feel like we think of revenge as like violent, but truth telling and getting someone to tell the truth, I feel like is such a powerful form of revenge in a different way, if you think about well, it. Well, it is. I mean, he, yeah. he, he can't tell the truth and he goes over, well, I won't, I won't do a spoiler for <laughs> <laughs> that the audience that's listening to us is going to go see the movie in the theatres because when I saw the final, Charlotte kept on saying to me, the score is going to be amazing. And I finally saw it at the first screening at Locarno. Um, and the score is amazing. It's like a character in the piece. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the fifth character. Yeah. Um, or the fourth character in a way. The women, the voices of the women and Veronica and, and Veronica and, and Desi. So it's, I think it's, it kind of takes you on a journey. You think you know where you are and you find you don't. Um, it's not horror. I don't want people to go expecting blood and gore. Um, it's yes. it's something else. It's just something rather beautiful um, and, and unusual. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned Texas Chainsaw, so you have two very different <laughs> movies this year. <laughs> it's very different competing, but I love that. We're great. It's a great range. What was that experience like being on that film? After, <laughs> well, which one? Which film? Which came first for you for filming? Was it She Will or was it Texas Chainsaw? Oh, She Will. Um, okay, so you were coming off of that experience and going into a right, very different right. world. I mean, stuff had happened in between, like a play yeah. in the way in in London and COVID, of course, oh, six yeah. months of lockdown because we we filmed Texas Massacre, Chainsaw Texas, Ma Texas Chainsaw Massacre in in <laughs> September of 2020, um, and you know I was. Yeah, I was there so briefly. I was there okay. for like four days, five days. Well, oh, I had to okay. in quarantine. I had to wait for, for three or four days and do multiple tests. But I was really, it took um, several days to figure out my hair because we were trying <laughs> to make it gray. And we must have put pounds of gray hair you know you can you can get strands of gray and you glue it in right um and it just kept on being swallowed up by my own hair it that was the biggest challenge was to get me to go gray um and so it was wow. hair and makeup took like two days um of figuring out and then i think i was only on the set for maybe one or two days i can't remember Oh, wow. Maybe it was only one day, or maybe it was two. I think we shot the stuff in the ambulance on one day. Oh. And the stuff in the okay. house on another day. Um, so it was really fast. But I really liked David Blue Garcia. He was, I, I had like five days notice. And David had about a week's notice because they, oh. they changed courses midstream. They changed directors yes. about three weeks in. So David literally had about a week. Um, and I had about just a little bit more um, because everyone else was already there. Um, yeah. At, you know, in costumes and what, they'd all been. Um, but he was lovely. Um, he is lovely. Um, and I, I find that level of bloody mayhem really <laughs> challenging to watch. Oh, really? Okay. Fortunately, I was gone before all of that happened. <laughs> you know, I, was, I was dead and gone. Um, but actually, I, I was, I felt for her. I, I kind of have to feel for someone. I have to find a way to feel for someone that I'm playing. 
And yeah. I felt really bad for her. Um, I mean, I know she's got some very, very stuck in the past ideas about race and ethnicity, but she was not malicious or, or with, with Ill, Ill feeling or ill meaning. Yeah. She was just um, totally out of her depth um, and, and had no idea what was going on, really, um, yeah. except that it was clear that they were going to kick her out of the house. And, and it was hers. And she was sick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was good to do. I was very grateful that I wasn't in that bus. <laughs> I don't know if I could have bought it. <laughs> well, you say that, you know, you've played some incredible characters in genre films and a lot of villains. And you say you have to, you know, you want to feel and have its connection to your character. So what is it like when you play these, you know, not so great characters and you're kind of trying to get into their headspace? What is that process like for you? And has it ever been difficult to kind of trying to empathize with these characters that you play? It's a bit weird to say no, isn't it? But that's no, not at all, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> my, you know, my husband thinks I was typecast as the Borg Queen, but I mean, <laughs> be, that, be that as it may, um, he thought no acting required, right? Anyway, um, the the one that was hardest for me of all of them was Christabella in Silent Hill. Oh, really? Okay, I remember you saying this in the post-mortem podcast with Meg Garris and about Silent Hill, yeah. Um, she really had dark thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> to put it lightly, yes. <laughs> she, you know, could be out there beheading people. Um, she's that level of, religious fanatic um, yeah. and that deranged um, but you know you've just got to go there I didn't realize it was going to get as wild as it did for example the ending of her getting ripped up wasn't in the original script oh really there were new pages <laughs> that showed up later and, and sometimes it's kind of hard to imagine how it's going to look. You know, you, I'm so focused on the character when, when we start that, for example, that sequence in Silent Hill um, where the pyramid rips off someone's skin and fling, oh my goodness, I had no idea. You know, it was a it was a sentence in the script, but it was blood curdling when you saw it. Um, and 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 the bus in Chainsaw Massacre. You know, I said, "I this is how how bad I am at watching movies." <laughs> I met by Zoom David Garcia on a Sunday afternoon, so I watched for the first time the original that morning. Oh, I thought I'd better see the original. Um, I'd read the script and I said to him, it's actually, a, it's a really good movie. I mean, the suspense and the tension and there isn't that much blood, is there? And he said, that's not going to be our movie. Welcome to the 21st century. There is going to be <laughs> blood. But not for a moment did I imagine the bus. I mean, it just went on and on. It did. <laughs> well, I didn't know whether to laugh or to cry, but I suppose it's uh, on a certain level, that's, that's the attraction, really. Um, Are you a big horror movie person? Like, you don't watch a lot of stuff in general, but do you like horror movies or certain no. kinds of horror movies? No, okay. No, no. <laughs> I'm, you, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I don't so much look at genre. I look okay. at who she is and, and what she might mean to me, in which case she might mean something to someone else watching. Oh. I mean, 
So I'm, I'm not really looking at the genre specifically. I'm, I'm looking at who she is. What did you see in Christabella when you first read the script for Silent Hill? So it's, it's complicated, it always is. We really needed the money. <laughs> I, I had to go to work. Um, Christoph Gans and the producer really wanted to work with me, which was kind of lovely. Um, they had seen a film that I was in that I really, really love called The Institute Benimente. It's a black and white movie. Mm -hmm. And it was made by a, a very famous pair of stop motion animationists. And this was their first live action feature. And I truly loved being in it. And Christoph had also loved the movie. And so he asked me, he said, I, you're the oh. only person I want to have play Christabella. How he got from the character in Institute Benjamenta to Christabella is an extraordinary leap. They could not be more different. But <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was flattered and touched. And, and it was a game. I'd never been in a movie of a game before. Okay. And I found that kind of interesting. Cool. Um, in fact, very, very interesting. Um, and of course, he's a wonderful filmmaker, Christoph. I mean, he is, oh, there comes someone. I know, I was gonna say, I, 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 oh, we'll interrupt real quick just to say, Zucchini. Say hi. Zucchini. He wants Buddy. to go. He's at the door. Oh, and then the, I don't know if you can see, you can't see it. The baby is right back there too. I didn't realize they were oh, both in here. Oh, really? They always okay. hang out with me when I do interviews. It's like they know oh, that no. I'm paying attention to another person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a pussycat for you. Yes. Um, and he, so, so Christoph is actually a fabulous filmmaker. I mean, yeah. um, it, it's his, his storytelling is, is pretty intense and it's, visually and, and metaphorically and symbolically so rich um, mm. that it was altogether very, very, uh, it was very interesting. It was interesting to do, yeah. um, but the last two weeks of the shoot were just spent in that church doing the burning sequences. Ooh, two really? weeks? It was two weeks, or it might have been 10 days, but it felt like an eternity. Um, oh my God. When I got home, I'm sure you, have you, you might have heard me tell this story, but I, I had a little black dog who, I was kind of her human, right? Okay. And the skipper used to wait for me. She knew when I was coming home and she'd be at the gate. And she was at the gate when the car dropped me, she was wagging. And I walked up to the gate, she stopped wagging and she looked at me. And then she backed off and walked away. She would have nothing to do with me until three weeks later I went off to do another movie. And when I came back, it was like, oh, you've come without Christabella this time. Oh my God. Animals, it was animals, the, yeah. I don't, they're weird. Animals are another level, but that's, that's, that's a lot. Three weeks though, that's a long time. <laughs> In oh fact, I, I had to go work with an energy worker to help shift whatever it was wow. that had, had showed up on set and kind of attached itself to me. It was, it was very, it's never happened to me before or since, and I truly hope it never happens again. That sounds awful. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and this is, a sh this is such a shift from talking about Christabella, but I also love you in the movie, The Little Vampire. I know it's such a silly movie, but oh, the right. little, like you and The Little Vampire to me, I was like favorite all time movie as a child with the veil, like it was everything. So I just wanted to hear about what your experience was like with that movie. It's so different than what, than like Silent Hill and everything, but that movie was so formative for me as a child. <laughs> I, I'm so glad to hear that. I love that movie. And it's had, so we fun. Had, 
we had so much fun doing it. Um, it was really, really lovely. Um, the kids were great. Um, Richard Grant was great. Um, it was, and, and I loved, I loved what they allowed, what, what we came up with costume-wise, that enormous hairstyle and my I favorite really I wanted my hair to look like that as a kid like isn't that <laughs> it was like I don't think I can physically make my hair look like that but I want it so like the costumes were so good in that movie. I, mean, I had I had a lot of help to get hair like that <laughs> I, I, I figured <laughs> but they gave me green eyes and incredibly long nails um I loved it I had I had such a great time and the costumes were fabulous. But the absolute best, almost the best bit of it, or it was like a wonderful coda to the film, was that I happened to be in London when they were doing the press screening. Okay. And they were doing it in Leicester Square on a Saturday afternoon. And they said to the press, we'll only let you in if you come with a child. So it was fabulous. So, so the whole there were there was there were lots and lots of children in the theatre because everyone had come with a child that they'd either borrowed <laughs> or their own. Um, so, and when we got to the moment when the the vampire cows dropped the cow pats on the vampire mobile, the children en masse stood up and started to shout. They were waving their arms, they were standing on the seats. They were, they were yelling at the screen. It was probably the best moment I've ever had in the cinema. That's incredible. It was yes, yes. It was just wonderful. Wow. <laughs> well, I have one last question for you. If, is there any, character or type of character that you haven't played that that you really want a chance to play in the future either on screen or on stage because you do stage performance as well right yeah do you know who i would really really like to play if they ever did a remake do you remember kung fu hustle yes I don't the, the 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 older woman with the cigarette hanging out of her <gasps> mouth. The flip -flop? Yes, that's who I'd. <laughs> I'd give anything to play that role. That is the best answer. She's the best part of that. Well, not the best part, but oh, what that movie is incredible in general. But she is incredible because she's such a badass woman in that movie. It's like yeah. so many dudes and. She, oh. And she I is loves so. That chilled do you know that that fag never comes out of her mouth and when they're in the air and she's chasing him in the air i would give anything to play that role I wish hair curlers house coat like yes. no not bought they cannot be bothered just like oh but so powerful so powerful oh and that would she be incredible. Does, yeah. she does something that is actually a thing in martial arts which is the shout Oh, yeah. And only a very few masters can actually do the shout. But I thought it was, I thought she was fabulous. I loved that movie. This is the kitten. Oh. Well, not kitten. She's like, she's two now, but I will call her the kitten. But this is Tiramisu. This is Tiramisu. Tiramisu. She's Tiramisu. What, what is she? Is she? Oh, she's, she's, a, she's a Siamese. She's a Siamese. Um, I know we rescued her. I used to work at an animal rescue, so she was a oh, product of when I worked there. Um, so I love that she's very fancy, but we got we found her under a truck, so she was free. Oh, she's beautiful. <laughs> but she's beautiful and spoiled. Good. Hey, baby, say hi. Good. Say hi real quick. Say each other. Okay, she's not interested at all. <laughs> Well, Alice, thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat with me about She Will and your incredible career. This was such a great talk and I really appreciate it once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've had a lovely time talking to you. Thank you.